Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the Constructive Criticism YouTube channel. I'm Spencer, host of Constructive Criticism and Limited Time Only, two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering. It's Wednesday in Oregon, as you'll notice I'm in a new place. I just moved uh, 20 minutes south uh, to Lehigh, closer to Game Grid, one of the sponsor of uh, Limited Time Only, and it's pretty exciting. It's pretty cool to be in this new space, and uh, I'm excited to get back to my content though. I really enjoy making Magic content, and this week's topic is... Um, personal. It it is. It it feels personal. Um, so this week I want to talk about something that I've noticed in the magic community growing over the past few months. Um, and it's kind of always been a problem, but like people have just become really more okay with it. And that's spike shaming. Um. <laughs> okay, so this might sound weird because I know a lot of players feel personally victimized by spikes in their time playing Magic the Gathering. And this is where the spike shaming I think started, is a lot of really mean players at local events um, doing mean things. And because of that, um, other players feel entitled to kind of be mean to all spikes at large because of a select few really crummy players. Um, but I want to talk about some of the things that I hear people say that are kind of rude um, and uh, just not something that we should maybe think about before we say blanket statements. Um, so let, let's kind of start with some of the big statements. Um, one of them I hear is, that person just takes this game way too seriously. Uh, okay, so uh, it is just a game, and I think that they know that. But I think that it is unfair of us to talk about how much someone cares about magic whatever if they like the game a lot or they care about the, their games a lot let them care about their games like i i don't understand why this is a problem like like sitting there talking about like this ptq grinder who's trying to get to the pro tour and how much they care about the game like why is that a problem why are you judging them for that that is so weird to me that's one that i don't quite understand and i think that this happens a lot throughout the other statements that people like to make Another one is asking people to let you take back things. At PPTQs, at game days, at whatever tournament you're at, people ask for take backs. They make a mistake and they're like, oh, can I fix that? And uh, when you say no, oftentimes you'll hear something like, oh, I guess that's how you want to win. Or you're such a rules lawyer. And it's like, no, that's not what's happening. So if you, let's take it out of magic. You're playing go fish with your friends. And you say, do you have any force? And they say, nope, go fish. And you're like, well, never mind. I changed my mind. Because I have new information, uh, I would like to change my play. And I would like to now ask you for sixes. You would never let them do that. So why do you think that all of a sudden in Magic the Gathering, it's now kosher to let somebody basically cheat at Magic the Gathering? I, I don't understand this concept other than the fact that you feel bad because you made a mistake and your opponent knows you made a mistake you know you made a mistake and now you want to take it back to make yourself feel better and that's that's not fair because that person didn't make a mistake and they're not asking you to take back things and if that's something that you've agreed upon with in your friend group or with your opponents that's fine but don't get mad at somebody when they say no to that they're not rules lawyering you you messed up and it is it is unfair for you to think that person's a bad person because they essentially didn't let you cheat. I wouldn't let you cheat in Monopoly. I'm not going to let you cheat at Magic. And it is really, really rude the way people talk about players that don't allow takebacks. It's like, I came to this, P this PPTQ or this RPTQ or this GP to win matches of Magic. I want to play better than my opponent and you're playing poorly. Why would I, why would I sacrifice this equity that you're giving me? And it's like, well, maybe I do take Magic too seriously. But, like, I also wouldn't let you cheat in another game. So, it's not just magic. It's just, I wouldn't I wouldn't let you ask for sixes after you ask for fours. So, another one that is really funny to me is card flicking. The hateful comments that people get that flick cards is kind of hysterical. Uh, saying you want to kill them, that you chop off their fingers. I have no idea why people have such a hard time with card flicking. It's like... You find it annoying, and I'm sorry. Uh, I, I've actually had to dial back on my card flicking because of comments left by other people and because of things that other people have said. 
Um, and that's weird. Like, I'm just shuffling through my cards. Uh, but it's associated very deeply with spikes. And, like, the thing that I, like, I've heard at, at, uh, at pre-releases, there's nothing worse than a spiky card flicker. And it's like, whoa, like, really? Like, I know that you're joking, but is, is this more appropriate than some of the jokes that spikes make, right? Like, you get mad at spikes for talking about filthy casuals or talking about, we'll get to game day playmats, but then people go and make these kind of comments and it's like, okay, so this doesn't feel, this doesn't, this doesn't feel one-sided. It doesn't feel like spikes are just mean to you. It feels like people are taking an active role in trying to bring down the spike community. And that's weird. It's like, why can't we all just love magic? Because if the truth is, is that we do all love this game. So who cares if somebody loves it differently than you? You know, I did a video a few weeks ago on like going to the right events for you. Right. And like one of the reasons I don't go to pre-releases is because I don't feel like they're the right events for me. And if you are the kind of person that wants to do a bunch of take backs and doesn't want to play against players that are trying to win the event, that then maybe you shouldn't go to PPTQs. It's fine that you want to go and you should feel welcome. But them t not making letting you take back plays and them flicking their cards doesn't mean that you aren't welcome. They, they're there for a reason, right? They want to win the event. That doesn't mean that they, you can't have fun and that you can't enjoy the game that they're also enjoying because they, they are enjoying the game. They just enjoy The part that they enjoy is competing and trying to win. That just might be different than the part that you enjoy. But that doesn't make them, like, not real fan. Like, this is this happens all the time when people are like, that person's not a real fan of something. The definition of fan is fanatic, right? It's just short for fanatic, right? So you could be a fan of Magic the Gathering EDH, and I could be a fan of Magic the Gathering competitive play, right? They're just fans of different parts of the same thing. Like, you, you can't... You can't just say somebody is doing the thing wrong, right? Like, uh, for a long time in Magic the Gathering, I actually had this mindset, I was, right? Like, I was like, there's a right way and a wrong way to enjoy Magic the Gathering, and winning is the right way. That's not true. I don't think that's true anymore. I think that was a very elitist mentality that I had, and it's something that I've changed. But since changing it, I've noticed when when dealing with other types of players that they ha also have that mentality about spikes. And that's something that we should change. Like, people are allowed to like the things that they like about the game. Speaking of which, let's talk about the playmat. So, for those who don't know, Oliver2 tweeted out a tweet that said, uh, there's nothing more intimidating than somebody who sits down across from me at a GP with a game day champion playmat. And people lost their minds. They were very, very offended that Oliver would make a joke about somebody bringing a game day champion playmat. Oliver is a professional Magic player. He made a pretty poor joke, but honestly, it's a joke that a lot of spikes make. Basically, all of them. Basically, it's a pretty common joke among higher level players. Is it rude? Yeah, it kind of is rude, and uh, I was... I personally have made the joke before and won't anymore. Like, it does demean somebody for something that they're proud of. I mean, if you look behind me, I have two state champion playmats hanging behind my wall, right? Like, what's the real difference? I don't know. I don't know why I made the joke before, but I have made the joke, just honestly and openly. However, the responses to the joke were significantly worse than the joke itself. Oliver's been threatened. Oliver's been bullied. Oliver's... I mean, the response, come on, guys, like, he made a joke about not being scared, not caring about your magic accomplishment, your personal magic accomplishment. Why do you care if he cares? Why does it matter? Do you care? Are you proud of your magic accomplishment? That's kind of what's important. It doesn't have to be that Oliver 2 needs to specifically respect you for winning your game day. And it certainly not doesn't make all spikes terrible people for not being intimidated by your game day champion playmat. They're probably not intimidated by my state champion playmat. They're probably not intimidated by the other person's pro tour playmat. Because at the end of the day, what they're really trying to do is just win the match. It doesn't really matter who's sitting across from them. His joke was poor. Oliver should have apologized. I've apologized for making similar jokes. He didn't apologize. But the responses, they're much worse. And I find that as a community, the community has become pretty vicious. 
I, I mean, like, Brad threw a card on the table in excitement that was winning him the game. And the chat blew up with threats, calling him names. The guy was excited and slammed his card onto the table. He didn't throw it as a, his opponent. He didn't fump fist, he pit fist pump in his opponent's face. Like, we're getting a little excessive, guys. We're getting a little sensitive. And it goes both ways, right? But let's be reasonable about what we're sensitive about. And let's not be sensitive and then go blast the world and attack them. I'm sure this video is going to be a little bit controversial. I'm probably wrong about a lot of stuff. I usually am. But I don't think that people who aren't spikes are being fair or kind of spikes. And I understand that there have been a lot of spikes that have probably been mean to you. But rules lawyering, that's not what you think it is. It's not me not allowing takebacks. It's not me... <laughs> it's. It, I mean... That's like trying to bend a rule to get a win that you shouldn't get, right? That's not you making a mistake and me saying, sorry, you made a mistake. And I don't think that those kind of behaviors, which are the kind that I most witness, are the kind that are rude. I have seen the rude behaviors from Spikes, right? They lose to a deck that they don't think is that great, and they're really rude to you about it. They shouldn't do that. That's really rude. I did a video on actually how to be a good spike. I believe that there are problems among spiky players. But I don't think that the reactions to those problems have been appropriate recently. And I think that we should try and address it. Because Oliver 2 should not get be getting told his head's going to get split open because he doesn't like your game day champion playmat. That's it for this week. Sorry if the topic was a bit intense. Or if you disagreed, leave a comment. Let me know. I'm open to criticism. I'm open to changing my mind. But I think that we have a real problem in our, on our hands. And it's making magic less fun for some number of people. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys all next week.